Hey guys, welcome to this very short tutorial on the bone of the arm, which I think is the UMS. So the UMS is going to have a head, which is this, which forms the head of the sphere. The head of the UMS um, in the shoulder joint articulation will actually fit into the clearance cavity of the scapula. Then just beneath the head, you have an anatomic neck, which is this one. Then you're going to have tuberosities, a medial lesser tuberosity, and a more lateral greater tuberosity. And if you look at those tuberosities, you expect something to be attached there, meaning something that is going to be greater, there is more attachments there, in this case muscles. So you're going to have the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor in that order from above going uh, below. Then you're going to have the subscapularis muscle inserting onto your laser tuberosity. Then between these two tuberosities, there's going to be a groove, which is this one, your bicipital groove, or the intertubacular sulcus. And this groove is going to be closed by a transverse humeral ligament, is one of the extrinsic ligaments of the shoulder joint and passing beneath that you will expect the tendon of the long head of the biceps bracket right then you are below that you expect an, uh, a surgical neck where you have the uh, humerus being more commonly fractured and in settling that surgical neck you'll be having the anterior and the posterior humerus circumflex arteries which are branches of the third part of your axillary artery and medial to it you also expect the axillary nerve which can be injured in these fractures of this surgical neck of the humerus then you have a third neck is going to be an embryologic neck where you have uh, the diaphysis meeting the epiphysis, but that is actually going to be uh, the in prepubital in just those that are below uh, 20 years of age. Then, if you trace the bone lateral, you'd expect to see a bicipital, rather a deltoid tuberosity for insertion of the deltoid muscle. Now, if you trace that deltoid tuberosity posteriorly and inferiorly, you'd expect a spiral groove or the radial groove, and this groove will actually be housing the radial nerve and the profunda brachial artery, which is the first branch of your brachial artery. And within this uh, groove, you can have injury of the radial nerve, resulting in a wrist drop. Then going more distally, you're going to see, posteriorly, you see the olecranon fossa, which receives the olecranon process of, um, of the ulna during full uh, elbow extension. Then anteriorly, you expect to see these two parts here, the capitulum, and you also expect to see the trochlea. And uh, these epicondyles, you're going to have a more prominent medial epicondyle and then less prominent lateral epicondyle. And just on top of the epicondyles, these ridges here, they're going to be your supracondylar ridges. Remember, the lateral supracondylar ridge will provide an origin for the muscle of the lateral compartment of the forearm. That is going to be the brachioradialis and the extensor capillary radialis longus. Whilst the medial epicondyle will actually provide origin for the muscles that are going to be superficial in the anterior compartment of um, the forearm. And the lesion to this, rather, a fracture of this medial epicondyle or an avulsion of that tendon, common flexor tendon, will result in what is known as a golfer's elbow. Whilst uh, the lateral epicondyle will provide origin for the superficial muscles of the posterior compartment to extensor compartment. And if you're going to have avulsion of that common extensor tendon, or avulsion of this lateral epicondyle, you result in what is known as a tennis elbow. And then just above the capitulum and um, the trochlea, you'd expect fossa, that is going to be the radial fossa and the coronoid fossa, respectively. The coronoid fossa will actually receive the coronoid process, um, the coronoid process of the ulna during full elbow flexion. Thank you for watching.